what you need to know about travel to Disney World and Universal Orlando in 2021. This is Go Inform Podcast, Episode 66. everybody. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me today. Welcome to episode 66. My name is Maven. I am your hostess on the show and I am the founder and blogger and all that stuff over at goinform.net. And so happy to have you here with me today. Today's topic is very timely. Um, We are going to talk about the things you need to know now about travel in 2021 to the theme parks in Orlando. Um, I think during the last episode, I told you we were going to talk about Disney World tickets today, but uh, I'm going to postpone that one because I've really noticed that there's a few things that I think you need to know um, if you are planning to go to the theme parks during 2021. And I don't want to push this off. I think it's important if you're starting to think especially about summer travel for 2021 um, to kind of have a heads up about some of the stuff that you need to be thinking about. So that is what we're going to do today. And there are show notes for this episode over at goinform.net slash 66. This topic is something that I actually first addressed in uh, one of my email newsletters that went out a couple of weeks ago. If you guys aren't subscribed, you need to sign up for the newsletter because uh, I send it out every couple of weeks and I try to really focus on something that I think you kind of want to know about right now, Um, whether it's planning tips or maybe just some things that are going on in the parks that you want to know about or something to consider for the future. That's the sort of thing I try to put into the newsletters. And it's kind of like a little mini blog post delivered directly to your inbox every couple of weeks. So uh, you can sign up to receive those. Just go over to to the website, go to goinform.net slash newsletter, and you'll see a sign up. Um, Pretty much if you go to the site, you'll see a place to sign up uh, wherever you are. But uh, get on the list because this is important stuff and it's timely. And a lot of times if I post something to the website, you may not see it right away. So if you get it in your inbox, then you won't miss it. So there's really three main things that I want to tell you guys about today. And some of this may be a little surprising. So hold on and uh, we'll get through it. And hopefully this is going to help you better plan for your future trip. So the first thing that's really important is that you need to know that it's important to plan ahead if you're traveling in 2021 to Disney World or to Universal Orlando. The world is changing rapidly right now. And I know that for the past year or so, like if you were able to travel, you could just kind of pick up and go. This is not really going to be the case beginning Now, I'm recording this at the end of April 2021, and it's starting to look like the rest of 2021 is going to be very important for you to plan ahead, and especially when it comes to these theme parks. The main reason that it's really important with the parks is that even though more people are going to be traveling, the capacity in the parks is still going to be extremely limited, at least through the summer, most likely through all of 2021. The parks are operating at something like 35% capacity right now. And that just is not very much when it comes to summertime crowds. Now, I think most of us can agree that we don't want to be in a big crowd right now. So it is really a benefit that the parks are keeping these uh, levels of guests down 
But the drawback is that there's a lot less space available for anyone who wants to go. The way that Disney and Universal are handling these capacity restrictions is a little bit different. Um, So this is also really important to realize. If you're planning to go to Disney World any time this year or even next year, uh, you are going to need to have a reservation to get into the park. So in order to get into one of the parks at Disney World, you have to actually make an advanced reservation. So they have limited space in each one of the parks. And the way that they're controlling how many people are going there is to have you in advance say which park you want to start your day in. Now, there's a pluses and minuses to this. Um, The plus is you know ahead of time that if you have a reservation for Magic Kingdom on Tuesday, that you're going to get in. Um, The minus is that there might be a lot of other people who want to go to Magic Kingdom on Tuesday, and they already made their reservation, and now there's no spaces left. So the reservation system is a really good way to find out in advance how busy Disney World is going to be on the dates that you are considering traveling. And I can tell you guys right now, and this is kind of what prompted me to create this episode, June of 2021 is basically booked. Um, If you go, and I really encourage you to go over to the Disney World website and take a look at that reservation calendar, because if you do so, you're going to see that Most all of the parks are already booked all the way through around the 4th of July. So I hate to tell you this, but if you were like spontaneously thinking, hey, I got my vaccine and let's go as soon as school gets out, we're going to go down to Disney World. You're going to be disappointed because their parks are already full. So this is a huge, huge thing to know about. Um, It is really useful to be able to look at that calendar and see ahead of time if there's going to be any issues. And um, this crowd calendar is actually really helpful to figure out what the situation is going to be at Universal also. Because if Disney World's parks are full, then you're going to have a pretty good idea that Universal is going to hit capacity as well. So I can't emphasize enough how important that Disney World reservation calendar is to figuring out um, when is a good time to visit Orlando. I've got a link to the crowd calendar in the show notes. Um, You can also find it if you go to the Disney World website under tickets. If you click that, you'll see a link that says check the availability. So you don't have to have tickets, have a reservation, anything to look at that calendar. So anybody can take a look at that and get a sense of, you know, how crowded the parks or how booked the parks are going to be. Because remember, even if there's no reservations left for a park, that just means that they've hit their capacity that they are using now, which again is much less than a typical summer day would be. So don't let that push you off from visiting because they are containing these crowds and keeping them low. But the last thing you want to do is make a plan and then find out you can't get into the parks. Now, uh, let me pivot for a second and talk a little more about how Universal handles this. So if you want to go to Universal Orlando, you will not make a reservation for the parks. Their parks also have very limited capacity, around the same as what Disney World is doing. And the way they handle it is they let in as many guests as they have room for under their current capacity restrictions, and then they turn people away. And this has happened a lot on busy days, like over spring break, over Christmas break. And um, I can already see it's going to be an issue in the summertime 
in 2021. How do you make sure you get into the park? You got to get there early. It's a first come first serve system. And uh, if you stay in one of the on site hotels, then you will have priority to get into the parks. You also get uh, early admission if you stay on site at Universal, which gives you that much of a head start too in front of the lines that are going to form to get in on a busy day. So if you look at that Disney World calendar and you see all the Disney World parks are not, they're full, the reservations are full, where do you think those guests are going to go if they don't have to make a reservation at Universal? A lot of them are going to try to go there. Even if you're only going to Universal, make sure you look at that Disney World calendar as a heads up for what to expect over there at the gate at Universal. And I always suggest staying on site at Universal. You guys can go back to my episode of a while back about Universal Hotels to learn more about that and why the other reasons why. But right now, it's really a good idea to be an on site guest to get that admission, even when they're turning away other visitors. Okay, so I think a big question here is like, well, how can you handle this? What, what are the best tactics? Um, the Really, the top thing really is to plan ahead. If you get on that Disney World calendar right now, you'll see that there are reservations available in July, in August, all the way beyond. You can actually look all the way through 2022 at that reservation calendar. You will note it's quite interesting. There's one day in October, um, which is the start of the 50th anniversary celebration at Disney World, uh, that you cannot get a reservation for Magic Kingdom right now. That's October 1st. Um, And there's also a date around Thanksgiving where you can't get a reservation for Magic Kingdom. So you might be surprised there could be a date that you are planning to be there that's already people are booking. Um, But for the most part, if you can plan now to travel at the end of summer, uh, you should have no problem getting those reservations. I'm going to do a whole episode about how those park reservations work and some tactics about that. Um, But the key thing to know is that All you need in order to make a park reservation is a park ticket. And in order to have a park ticket that'll allow you to get a reservation at Disney World, all you need to do if you're planning to stay on site is book a package with a $200 refundable deposit. It will include your park tickets and you can make that reservation. So even if you aren't planning to go for a long time, you can actually make a deposit now and then make your reservation. So think about that as an option for securing the dates you really want. So planning ahead, big deal. You know, you guys, you can actually make a reservation all the way into 2022 now. So if You know, if you start thinking you want to just get something on your calendar for maybe next summer, um, you can do that and you can get that reservation for the parks you want and figure all that out right now and have it wide open. But if you want to go end of the summer in 2021, there's still plenty of space for you. And um, that's actually a really great time to travel. Uh, Usually once school gets back in session, if you have the flexibility to travel at the end of August or into September, those are typically the lowest crowd times of the year anyway. And um, you may kind of have the place to yourself. So uh, keep that in mind too, if you want to go during this summer. So next thing I want to address is safety. So I think it's important to recognize that uh, the parks, both the Disney parks and Universal, they have been operating safely since July of 2020. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy now to think about 
anything happening in 2020. But really, these parks uh, operated through the whole second half of 2020 and now into 2021 with a ton of safety measures in place. And they really haven't let up on any of that. So, you know, if you want to find out more about kind of the details of what the parks are doing in terms of COVID safety, you can check out episodes 51 and 53. Those are both about um, really about what the parks were doing when they reopened and what they've been doing. Um, the show notes for those two episodes, I actually keep updated constantly. Um, so you can just go over to goinform.net. You'll see them right at the top of the page are my posts about COVID at those parks. And there's just a lot of stuff that they're doing. The thing is, traveling to Disney World and Universal Orlando is probably a lot safer than you might think. Once you are in those parks, you really are in, you know, kind of a COVID bubble. So both Universal and Disney have been taking all these precautions. And one of the things that they really do well is enforcement. So, you know, a lot of the things that you're going to find when you go there is like social distancing, you know, wash your hands, wear your mask, all that stuff. Same kind of stuff you've been doing all along, you know, going to the grocery store or whatever. But the difference between Disney and the grocery store is that they are constantly enforcing this. There's no pushing the rules where if they want you to be wearing a mask all the time, which pretty much they do, they're going to insist upon it. So the thing is, I think a lot of us worry about, you know, the other people, the other guy, right? Well, there's a lot going on to make sure that everybody around you is really doing the right thing and staying safe. And this is how they've been able to keep things running and, you know, do it safely for all of this time. And of course, I'm just going to put in a little plug. Make sure you get vaccinated so you stay safe and you just keep the people around you safe, too. Um, as more and more people are vaccinated, that's just going to make it even less likely for stuff to spread in these parks. Uh, you can bet that they're still going to require masks and, you know, all these other protocols will be in place for quite some time even after um, most people are getting vaccinated. But anything that you can do that I can do to, you know, move this along and keep everyone safe is really, really worth it. So make sure you go get your vaccination. Now, my tip number three might be a little unexpected in an episode about traveling in 2021, but um, I think it makes sense. And that is that you might not want to travel to the parks in 2021. Besides all of the extra sort of COVID-related uh, precautions that you're expected to take right now, there's just a lot of things that are modified that aren't going to make your experience the same as it would have been in 2019 and that it probably will be by as we get into 2022. If you have never been to these parks, now may not be the best time to go. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's not happening. There's generally, you know, no parades, no fireworks, a lot of shows are canceled. Character greetings are different. Basically, you're just um, taking selfies from a distance. You know, you're not getting a hug from Mickey right now. Those are a lot of those are the things that, you know, people think of when they think of traveling to Disney World and, you know, visiting Universal. So if you've never been there, there's a lot of the stuff that you may really want to experience that's just not happening right now. And you can still go and there is still a lot that is going on, but it just may not be the same experience that you really want um, when it's your first time. And for those of you who have been there before, you know, maybe maybe you're okay with the modified experience. But just keep in mind that, you know, if you've been there before and, you know, you like to get on the monorail and hop around between the resorts, that's not really a thing right now. Um, you can't 
go between the resorts unless you have a dining reservation somewhere. The attractions that you're used to, a lot of the queues are modified. Um, Some of the attractions, the first part of it that's sort of part of the queue isn't happening. Like a good example would be the uh, stretching room at the Haunted Mansion. I think you can imagine that is not uh, an experience you're going to have right now. So you do need to know that if you travel this year, it's not going to be quite the same, but it's still Disney magic. It's still, you know, the universal, the Harry Potter magic, um, just different. And park hopping is also different. Uh, There is park hopping at Disney World. That was gone for a while, but it has come back. But there are restrictions on how it works. And that, again, is something I'm going to talk more about as we um, get into another episode. But I do have information about that on the Disney World COVID post on the website. So if you want to really dive into these changes, check that out. So you guys, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff to consider if you want to go in 2021. I really just kind of want to give you a little little reality check and um, heads up mainly. So if you're you're dreaming of that (laughs) post-vaccination vacation, that you can really like do it without these surprises that you that you aren't going to like. So, you know, consider it. Consider traveling in 2021. That the main things to know, again, it is safe to go there. Um, planning ahead is essential. Consider traveling at the end of summer or into the fall uh, for more, you know, flexibility and availability. And consider just booking a trip for 2022. Dates in 2022 are available now. And if you, again, if you book it as a package, you just put down that $200 deposit that's refundable um, and you can lock in your dates. You can get your park reservations and you can get that on the calendar. So, you know, you're finally going to get back to Disney or you're finally going to get there at last (laughs) For the first time. And the same goes with Universal. Uh, You don't need those park reservations, but you know, you can make your reservations now and, you know, get your dates locked in. Um, And definitely, if you're going to Universal, consider spending at least one night on site. That would probably be my top tip for visiting at Universal. Show notes for this episode are over at goinform.net slash 66. And don't forget, you guys, you can um, get on the mailing list to get this kind of information straight to your inbox over at goinform.net slash newsletter. And um, you can also hit reply on those newsletters and it will send an email straight to me. So there's a little tip for you. If you have a question um, or a topic that you want me to discuss, you know, shoot me an email back or send me a message on uh, Instagram or Facebook. I'm goinformnet at both of those places. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you are having a good 2021 and that you have lots of fun things to look forward to this year. And I will see you next time.